I always wanted to perform on that stage in front of that crowd. Four kills for Boaster. This man's the IGL, but he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Boaster above already manages to drop one. He's gonna peek wide and get both of them. I always wanted to be a pro. Boaster pulling off the clutch. Boaster's done it, leading by example. I have no down. idea oh, about Boaster. Through Boaster's round of the corner just in Gets time. It's the win for Fnatic. Hello, my name is Jake, also known as Boaster, and I'm the IGL of Fnatic. I was on holiday with my family, and there was a, we, we watched a show at the hotel, there was a show happening at the hotel, and there was these two really muscular men, uh, like, dancing with this girl, uh, and I was like, Oh, mum, like, how do I get muscles like that? Like, what are they? And my mum was like, they're dancers. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna go do dancing then, I guess. Eight years down the line, didn't have any muscles, but I was actually quite good at dancing. I could do, there's a, there's a musical called Dear Evan Hansen. I like one of the songs from that. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass. I'm waving through a window. Can anybody see? Is anybody waving back at me? No, was, uh, don't put that in. I was out of tune. I was out of tune. When I was 14 or 15, I got a West End role in um, Oliver. So I was uh, a part of Fagin's gang with Rowan Atkinson, who is like Mr. Bean, as people might know him as. So I auditioned for two dance schools. One of them, I didn't get a recall, but the other one I did, and it, uh, for some reason, my brain was just like, well, these all wanted me, but the other places that didn't specialize in dance didn't want me, even though we did the dance audition. So I was just all over the head, all over in my head, and I was like, I don't even want to go to this school anymore. So I told my mom, I was like, I'm not going to the recall. And she was like, what are you doing? Like, no, you, like, you've got a recall, you should do it. I was like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to do this anymore. So then gaming just suddenly took over, and I was just like, I'm done with any of that kind of showbiz stuff. If you want to see me on stage, Mum, I'm going to make it pro and then I'll go on a stage there instead and do my thing. The biggest benefit I had from being a theatre kid is that I don't get nervous playing in front of people. I don't care what people think when I'm on stage being an idiot. I can do things that other gamers can't do just because of that kind of background and it's helped me uh, create a career for myself and, a, and hopefully a future. <laughs> Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Fanatic office. Your boy Boaster here is going to give you a room tour. Let's go. We've got the counter area here where uh, us boys like to chill sometimes. Yes, yeah, so we've got all the trophies here, although Fanatic Valorant um, haven't got any trophies yet, but maybe Copenhagen Masters, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll grab that trophy. And then we've got the business area. This is where the big Don Daddies uh, do their business. Big moves are made in there. You know, signing Boaster. And then here, that's where the Fnatic gear is being made. Here's the pull-up bar area. Mini, Coach Mini likes to walk past here and sometimes he just comes to this bar and does one pull-up or two or three. Let's see how many I can do. I've been going to the gym. <laughs> I'm injured, I'm injured. <laughs> Got Minnie's little coaching room here. Uh, it's a bit messy, so we'll just uh, skip that one. And then in here is where the magic happens. Well, sometimes, <laughs> if we win. Yeah, this is where we just play video games, honestly. It's nothing special. I will happily be a clown and be an idiot. I would dance around like a lunatic because it's just fun and I got the skills to do it, so I might as well, you know, do a bit of showing off. No, <laughs> just do a little bit of dancing. And also, I think it's because, like, a lot of my teammates are so kind of obviously not used to that. I think it helps them gain their confidence by having someone who is so kind of like doesn't care about all that because maybe all of this is new to them like people caring and like they're like so like oh my goodness like there's cameras there's people watching and then they look over to me like 
you see him outside of the game do all of these dance moves and stuff like that. But when he's in game, he's he's a very good teacher, a leader, and I and I hate making mistakes being around him because he, he would tell me off. But yeah, it's a, he's a he's a great leader. And I couldn't ask for a better one, and I'm happy that I've been his teammate since the start of Valorant. You have to have a balance. Obviously, it's in the name, leadership. So you need to be a leader. So when there are things that are going bad, you can't just be a clown or an idiot. You have to kind of read what's going on, understand your teammates and empathize and talk to them. And I think kind of uh, that's what's important. And like I can be funny and whatnot, but there are times when I'm also very serious and I care a lot and I'm very emotional and sensitive. So I think uh, the players see both sides of me. They see it when I'm kind of relaxed and having fun, but also there's a time to head down now and focus, get into the game, uh, and let, let's let's win this and let's show respect and let's sh have that discipline. And, and that's what we do in scrims, that's what we do in officials. Like, we, we look like we're having fun, which we are because we're winning, but also we're taking it very seriously. We're not messing around. Most people who are in that role, it's a very serious, you're not, you're not having so much fun, but Bos is the kind of person that like is able to kind of exude that kind of like fun and just like excitement, despite having like the the hardest role on the team. Um, so behind the scenes, obviously, when I'm working with him, he's not twerking and dancing. Like me and him working together, it's like serious, like you know. And the, but the moment that camera's on him, he's just like goes to a different person, you know. Like he's just instantly that person, and it's kind of funny to see him switch into that person. But 90% of the day is him just being a normal person. <laughs> isn't twerking and dancing, it's just him working hard, you know? So, you know, there are, there are interesting things there. Like, people don't quite realize how hard he does work. He isn't just on Twitter every day, just trying to farm social media followers. He's, in my opinion, probably one of the hardest working people in Valorant in terms of just like professional play. Um, probably the most creative mind in Valorant as well, I would say. The thing I like about competitive gaming is obviously beating other people. Um, to go out and travel the world uh, competing and like all that kind of hard work and all that grind uh, is for that one moment where you're playing and you're playing and you win or lose and the, the, the losses are really hard but the wins are really good. <laughs> I wouldn't actually say my kind of early days of competing was anything professional. I never really made it that far. Like I was in the UK scene, which uh, was treated as a bit of a meme in Counter-Strike. And then I decided to kind of drop my dreams of going pro and um, I, and I went to vlog for EXO in the LEC in League of Legends. So uh, I did that, but all the time I was there, I just wanted to go pro, so I was like, I decided it actually doesn't matter what game I go pro in, I just want to go and compete because it's the only thing I really want to do in life. I think I always believed that my team could win trophies, like the team that we played in. Our kind of pattern is as soon as we roster swap, we get better. And it's happened all throughout this day to this day, actually, throughout time through this day. Um, so I think First Strike was the first major tournament that Valorant, uh, that Riot held. We were two of eight teams that were unsigned. It was us versus Purple Cobras. And the funny thing is, Purple Cobras was the first team we had to face, I think, um, in the kind of group stage or the playoff stage. And we absolutely annihilated them, knocked them out, bish bosh, out you go, with a kick on the bum. But it take, gets taken out by Shao as Mo refracts him. Shredder oh. gets another one as well. Zippin's just clean shot to the head. Oh. And another one! Oh, oh baby! And then this is not an easy retake for Simon FC. If they do this, you might as well send them to the final already. Just give him the trophy. Well, Jack's being consistent oh. and he opens up one on Angel. This is now getting a little bit scary. Oh, this is with the God Tear flag. He's got a double Summon FC upset FPX. And they may just have booked their spot in the grand. Finals! And we were playing against Heretics, and um, yeah, we lost, unfortunately. Doma, it's all on you. That's one, that's two, though, now loaded. Oh, 
rolled oh. over. Boaster and Mo with it all to do to save the side. Boaster finds one more. Second one oh. wins it. He's pushing back in. Boaster. Oh, Boaster. This poke plant strength the summon have, but actually Lowell going to find two kills. Oh. He finds the third. Oh, look at this. Aurora, that is so smart. Oh. Galaxy oh. Brain. Aurora, oh. just 200 IQ. Them. Goes up. Hides the TP from Boaster. Okay. Nuki now finds Jack. Oh. Swings out, finds another. Oh. Four on the round for Nuki. Heretics, the Titan Slayers, took down Liquid, took down G2, and now they take the crown. Heretics are your Valorant first strike European champions. Um, last year, when we first joined Fnatic, obviously I had there was pressure there. There was new expectations. There was like we are now under an org. We have to be performing, otherwise you're 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 gone. You're out of the team. You're kicked. Um, yeah. So I think that was that was one like thing that I was kind of juggling at the start. And then the next thing was like after our run against Sentinels, and we made it all to the finals at that Masters two. No way! Did they just do that? And again, everything goes right for X10. The execution is perfect. <laughs> is this the voice? Are we getting the voice really? They've only done it for Natic! Sending version one home, living through the law. Can't imagine a better player to close it out for Fnatic. Booster to take Fnatic forward in it's two. all gone. Booster closes it out anyways. 13 to 8 we go. They have fought their way into the grand finals. Sentinels, they're gonna get the defuse. They've done it. Sentinels are the masters to Reykjavik champions. And I think it was throughout last year, through the losses and through kind of um, the hardship that I come to the realization that none of it matters. Like, thing. obviously the day after the loss or the night after the loss, I'm not gonna be able to sleep and I'm gonna be replaying the games back in my mind. But I think, yeah, I think it's just like, I have no pressure anymore. I, I, I know where I, think we should be performing. I know what I think that we should be kind of achieving and I'm going to go for them. And if it doesn't work out, rinse and repeat, we'll go again next tournament. Like Masters 1, what, a, what an absolute kind of rough period for us. I think that whole event was kind of uh, ruined for me just based off, it just wasn't the best experience for me. And I think it definitely will be kind of like a, a learning experience nonetheless. Like it can't get any worse than that. Can it? I hope not. We made a roster swap and we had a reset and we, once again, another 5-0 in groups and we didn't lose a single game and we actually won something. So now I've got that taste of victory under my belt. You know, I know like now we got the win, I know what it's like to win. So I'm going to be like, yeah, I, I just think now we've got the win. We're like, oh, finally, like we've got a win. No way! Is no way! It's how Fnatic close out the map, close out the season, and become the VCT EMEA champions right here. I don't think I've ever had a point where I've said, I want to stop gaming. I think it's always been a part of my life, and my friends have in gaming and like my whole kind of everything is I have is in gaming. I've invested all my eggs in the gaming. So um, I don't think I've ever wanted to step away from the whole industry. I think it's somewhere where I'd, I'd like to be for the remainder of my work years um, and helping the scene to grow and develop and helping kind of make it a positive place and whatnot. But the biggest thing inside of me was I always wanted to be a pro. I always wanted to perform on that stage in front of that crowd and do this with the trophy. I want to lift the trophy.